Welcome back to my vanilla hyphen playthrough. We, in the last episode, took Erbo and um, have just taken Paran and found a trade fleet there. And we also took Gopagaz and Goshen and also found a trade fleet there. And we're going to have a lot of money very soon. Um, it's already given us the money, which is great. We've got 29,000 credits, which is a lot of money for the early game. I'm really, really happy that we found these two trade fleets. Honestly, that's extremely lucky. It's probably not going to happen to you if you do the same playthrough, so I'm sorry about that. But it, it's a great setup, and it means I can spend a little bit more time just getting things ready to start the game. And I can get the Sevastopol a big tank of fuel as soon as we start. When we led off last time, we were just doing some work here in this to dismantle and, and get hold of Rex. Now, looking at this, I probably don't have enough time to put protection on before I search for survivors. I'm going to try because I can interrupt the crew protection to grab the survivors, and it's really the last thing I want to grab. Um, no, Ooh, it's going to be tight. It's going to be really tight. Uh, no, I think I'm going to have to scrap it and just roll the dice, and I might get the 50% um, debuff. But we'll see what happens. Okay, they're just dismantling a 4,000 grand gun. That's some more money. That's great. Uh, Sevastopol has still got 14 hours to get to its first destination. Uh, also, we found more fuel here, so they are refueling, which is great. Tons of fuel. We don't need to worry about them at all. Uh, still, nobody's been alerted to our presence yet either. We are still very stealthy, so we need to land this lightning. It took a missile, unfortunately, in the last game. Oh, I must have misclicked there. And we'll just land it anywhere good to land. There is a 28% bay over here, so we'll try and land it over there. And yeah, one thing I'm just going to endeavor to do is concentrate a little bit while I'm uh, engaging in a battle because I do have a tendency to talk a bit of rubbish and then lose concentration at the same time, which is not that exciting to watch. So we'll just come into this 28 bay. Nice and easy. And we're down. Cool. Not a bad landing. I'm happy with that. Uh, no events in this town, which is cool. Straight into the shipworks, straight into the repair bay, and we will repair the lightning. Let's see what we've got going on here. I want to sell this A220. It needs six ammo, which is insane. So it needs four ammo, which is quite a lot for a light ship. Um, there's no thing here. No, no thing. There's nothing here I want to buy. So I'm happy with that. Let's see what's going on in the supply section. We don't care about fuel because we're getting free fuel. So we've got some 100 millimeter AP available for sale. We have some 100 millimeter prox fuse. We saw how good that was. Now that I've got a lot of money, I'm probably going to buy about 80 just to keep my guns well loaded for now. There we go. And we're going to buy some AP as well. We'll get that up to 100. Um, we'll get some more aircraft rockets too. We'll probably get that up to 90. And now I'm feeling much more comfortable doing big strikes because I've got a lot of equipment to back them up. The other thing that Paran is, is that it is a intel center. So um, I can spend the intel that this town has generated to find the locations of things. So what I want to do now is I probably want to hopefully find out where my closest strike fleet is or do I want to just go after trade fleets? I probably just want to go after trade fleets. So one trade fleet is up here in Canmore. It is heading up to Masada at this, but we don't know how fast it is because they are currently landed. We've got another trade fleet on the way up to Shaele, which is another fleet HQ. They are traveling at speed 100. So I can actually estimate where they are based on how long it's taken to get there. Um, I want to see if there's any other trade routes over here. There is one here. They're also heading to Shaele. So what I know is they may head back along this, this line as well. Um, another trade fleet probably heading to Shaele. Yep, so the Windwalker. So there's a, this is, Basada might be a good spot to camp. And we have another one here that is heading to Masada, Sirocco. Now, uh, at the moment, I'm not too worried about chasing these. I don't need the money, but it's good to know that there are trade fleets in the area because I was worried after catching these two there wouldn't be any around at all. I'm going to do pause the game. We'll wait and see if anything goes wrong with this rescue. Nope, nothing bad happened, which is great. Um, I misclicked and they did a rescue order. Um, I don't actually want them to dismantle this gun because uh, it's 3,000 credits. Eh. We'll just do crew protection if we can get away with it, because I forgot it stores how long you've done it. Okay, easy, too easy. So we've got 10 hours of repair here, unfortunately. That's quite a long repair time, but I'm not that worried. It means they've got a chance for their morale to increase. So this rest bar here, every time it hits 100%, and it only ticks up when you're sitting in a town, their morale will go up by one. So, and it also banks. So if you don't manage to complete it while you're, you're in a town, it'll stay at the percentage it was and then continue from there the next time you land. Um, we'll land this lightning as well to get it some repairs. I was a bit sloppy last episode with my fighting. Um, still no sign of landed. Oh no, wait, there is a landed ship here. So we may have found our first Tarkin. I forgot to check if this was a mercenary town or not when I landed in it. We're coming into land. Need to come over a little bit. Just 
bear with me while I concentrate. I think we found our first target looking at that ship. And we're down. Nice. Uh, let's see. No, it's not. Well, these are ships for hire. Okay, what have we got for hire? We've got a Skylark, which is a good pickup because it means I can set up another strike fleet. We have a... Is this a... Yeah. Oh, it's a Fat Man. Interesting. Four... The Fat Man, it's, it's like... The ship is like a blank slate. It's just got four 37mm um, guns and engines and nothing else. Um, and then we also have a Fennec, which is the light Corvette that I bought at the start. Um, to protect my mothership. I could pick up another one of those, but they're very expensive. Um, let's just get my ship repaired before we do anything else, before I forget, because I have a bad habit of forgetting to do that. Um, we'll sell this gun. There's nothing here that I really want to buy. Um, check the supplies as well. So we've got more aircraft rockets. We've got 250 kilogram bombs, which are great to see. We'll grab some of those. These are awesome. Uh, we'll get maybe eight. I think, I think the big ships can carry four. So eight is enough to send our big ships out once. Can I afford 16? Okay, oh, let's just, we've got tons of money. Let's just get as many as we can because they're rare and great. Now, I'm tempted to buy this Skylark just as a... Oh, they've moved around. I'm tempted to buy the Skylark as a backup in case something happens to one of my strike fleets. It's a tanker, so it means I can get the mothership further. Yeah, I'm going to buy the Skylark. So that's a lot of money I just spent very early on, but I've still got 14 grand, so I'm not that concerned. Now, if I send... Well, I've got enough few. I'm going to send the Skylark straight to Erbil to join with Sevastopol, just so that it has more fuel capacity and there's some other things they can do. We've got two hours repair for this ship. Um, the other ships take 9.7 hours, so we'll just sit and wait for the repairs to go through. Um, we might actually fast forward here. We'll just check a few things out. 1.8 hours is gonna go past very quickly if I fast forward, so I'll just tab it. Oop, <laughs> sticky keys. That's great. That's what you wanna happen in the middle of a recording. <laughs> um, cool, I wonder how that's gonna go across. So that's because I was tapping shift to speed things over. I needed to disable sticky keys. Um, and we'll just wait a couple of seconds for this repair to finish. I don't want to miss it. Surprised we haven't picked any radio signals up again. Just while we're waiting, I want to click on the Sevastopol for a second. You'll notice that we have a radar section here. If I select one of my fleets, you'll see that radar section goes away, but I still have the ELINT and the IR. And just to reiterate what I said in the last episode, that is because the Skylarks have the sensor, the ELINT dome and the infrared sensors mounted on them. When I have some more time, I'm going to reconfigure my Skylarks a little bit because currently that radar dome is actually um, obscured. All right. So we're still looking for this Tarkan, who I think is at Suva, and I have a choice to make. I can either send the Ghost, this, this fleet up to Ashkelon to take here, get some more intel, and start searching for the hidden city, or I can send them eastwards to try and find the Tarkin. Now, I don't think I need to find the Hidden City yet because the Sevastopol is still on its way to Erbil. So we're gonna go over to um, Goshen to try and find this Tarkin. And the reason I'm doing that is he's northeast of Ur. So he's probably gonna be here or here. These are the two most likely locations for him to be in. So they're gonna take off and head off. Seven hours for this repair, which I'm a bit frustrated by, but that's my own fault for getting hit by a missile. And what I'll do is I'll fully fuel this ship while I'm waiting for these guys to arrive. That way they can continue on earlier. So we'll just get ready to send the lightning on when it's time. Um, we don't need to send him out with 100% fuel, to be honest. Oh, it doesn't really matter. I'm really not that worried about it. I like to wait until he can return, just in case he runs into something that he can't deal with on his own. He is a very light ship. Okay, we'll send him in. So that's those two fleets split up. 6.6 .6 hours here on these repairs. These guys will be far too far north, but we will be taking Ascalon soon to update the locations. Well, let's see if we can get ourselves an early target. Zoomed in on the wrong location. I do quite look like seeing my the shadows of your ships as they move into a destination. Um, let's see if we can maybe run into another trade fleet and get another free chunk of cash. Here we go. So this is the visual range of our ships. So as soon as they enter this area, we'll be able to see them. They have now detected us. Actually, it doesn't look like they have detected us because the green bar, oh no, the green bar is going down, so they have detected us. And as long as we hit them before that green bar expires, we'll get a surprise attack and they won't alert the enemy to our presence. Looking at the fleet here, we've got an Intrepid, we've got a Slogger. Um, I don't need to use proximity fuse, but why not? Like, it just makes life so much simpler.
You can use proximity fuse to shoot down rockets as well. It's also good to buy for your bigger ships because they will use it in, um, they'll automatically load it when you're dealing with a missile intercept. Oops, let's, don't fly into that ammo, that's bad. He's almost dead. I'm gonna switch to HE now. Just to try and conserve some ammo. And all we'll do is we'll just get below him when we can to take advantage of the hole that I've opened it is his under armor. I'm not too worried about that 37mm fire from the Courageous, and now we'll take it out. I do like the name Courageous. You do have to be courageous to take on an invader in one of these ships. Because they just fall apart in seconds. I'm surprised you survived that. And that, and that, and that. There we go. So it took a couple of hits again that I didn't really need to, but we're still fine. We're still moving at a good, decent space. We're still making good ground. Um, let's see what we have to find in the town. We're not going to get into the town just yet. Let's deal with the mini game of loot. Um, lightning hit level three, which is great. Ah, this is the best upgrade for especially a light ship like this, because this means that you recover morale so much faster. Um, so you can use them over and over again. Okay, we have survivors to search for. We have a fuel tank about to explode. We have ammunition that is going to explode. We'll grab the fuel tanks. We'll grab the ammo. We'll try and deal with the survivors, and then we'll grab... Oh, this Moloch's about to go. Okay, fuel tank, Moloch, ammunition, and I'm going to leave the survivors for this one, I think. Let's see how that goes. Um, these guys have 5.6 hours before they can repair. And we'll just keep... Cool. That's the sky. The um, Skylark landed. You can see how much fuel range we still have. We haven't even looted the fuel from this wreck yet. So that's the fuel safe. We've now got enough range for 4,000 kilometers. Um, the Moloch is about to explode, so we'll grab that. I'm actually going to try and grab both of them because that's a lot of money for both. Five hours left on the repairs over there. This Skylark has also arrived here, and I did say I was going to refuel it. Oops. So yeah, while I'm in here, I went in here by accident. This infrared scanner is slightly obscured, so when I get the chance, I'm gonna mount it upside down here where I can do its own scanning, but I don't have the time or the the equipment yet, we'll just cancel what we did, um, to make that change at this point. Um, oh, they're already fully fueled, so I can't actually spend any. There was some good stuff here, I think, yeah. There's some more 100 kilogram bombs, so we'll just grab all they've got. Um, there's some AP rounds here as well. We'll grab, I know I haven't made any more money, but I'm about to, so we'll grab up to 150 AP. AP is very important for um, keeping my lightnings useful later on in the game, because it's how they can deal with larger ships. Okay, and this rescue event's almost finished. So that's one D80 captured. Um, I hate the way it does a zoom in sometimes, it just zooms you into a random location. It zooms into where your mouse was. So I've got the choice between searching for survivors, securing the ammunition, or getting this gun. If I don't secure the ammunition, it is going to explode and either kill the survivors or kill the gun. If it kills the survivors, I will not get a morale penalty for failing to save them. If it kills the gun, I'm in a bad state. So we're going to take, we're going to roll the dice and try and get the gun. Um, and we'll just see what happens when the ammunition explodes. Take out the survivors, please. Yes, excellent. That's a perfect result. So I'm not going to get penalized for not saving the survivors. Um, cool. Okay, so that's us now able to land in Suva. Um, Skylark needs, sorry, the Lightning needs to land for some repairs. Uh, doesn't look like there's any ships landed here, so this is not the location of the Tarkin, unfortunately. So we're just going to stay here long enough to fully repair and then head on again. And you can see how much territory I am taking and covering um, before, like, the Sevastopol still has not arrived at its first destination. That 90 km per hour top speed is very detrimental to it being an effective um, strike carrier but as a as a home base it's fine because if these guys get in trouble they're going to attract enemy attention to where they are not where it is and that's exactly what i want to happen so we're going to repair this guy or check what's available to buy here now there's some very important things available to buy here there's kh-15ps which are strategic missiles that home in on enemy radar signals there are planes available here we have R9 Sprints available here, which are anti-air missiles. There are KH-15s, which are radar homing missiles. Um, do we have any Zeniths? No, there's no um, there's no tactical missiles, but there are strategic missiles. Now, these are good guns. These are 130 millimeter guns. I could actually replace the 100 millimeter guns on my Lightning with these quite easily. Um, it's, a, it's almost a straight swap. If you look, I can just take these off. Swap these over, and I'll instantly have enough 
Um, I don't need to add anything to the ship. It, it slightly slows the ship down. I have enough ammo to operate them. It's it's very quick and easy upgrade. Um, I might actually do that, and then I'll sell the AK-100s. Just the 130 millimeter just gives it a little bit more punch. Um, so I'll sell the 100 millimeters. This is going to take three hours to complete, which is fine. And what I'm going to do, I've got 15 grand in the bank. I'm going to buy three KHPs, three KH-15s. Um, I would like to buy some more T7s as well, but I am pushing the amount of money that I have available to me here. I have to be very careful with this fleet. I can't afford to lose it while they're carrying all of these this equipment. I think I'm going to leave it there just so I've got a little bit of a cushion of money. Um, we'll call this the lightning, uh, the lightning upgun model, just so I don't confuse it with one that has missiles. And we'll get that done. We'll just check the supplies really quickly because I'm now looking for our 130 millimeter ammo. Um, so 100 millimeter, 30 millimeter prox fuse is fine. Don't want to spend too much because I am running a bit low on cash. We'll get 20 of those just for now. And I need to start making some money fast because that was a very expensive upgrade. Um, so now, once I, I now need to get this fleet to meet up with the Sevastopol so I can transfer over the missiles. Um, but until I do that, they're just going to have to operate carefully. But the Skylark can always escape if there is an issue. So let's unpause. We've got um, four hours of repairs over here, three hours of repairs over here. So we'll wait for that to run through. This will also give them a chance to potentially go, jump up to morale eight. And let's just see how things are going. Haven't picked up any radio signals yet, which is interesting. I'm surprised about that. Um, we've now reached the max amount of fuel that this fleet can carry. Um, so there is still additional fuel available, but they can't pick any more up. These guys don't have quite as much range, but that's fine. Their next target is Kua. They're going to head up there uh, when they finish their repairs. Just speed things up a little bit. There we go. So we've got one hour left for repairs over here. One hour left in repairs over here as well. Um, it's probably less than it. Yeah, it's actually completed. It doesn't update very well, so it, it can be misleading. I'm going to send them on to Zartana to try and finally locate uh, this Tarkan that's over here. If he's not at Zartana, I am probably going to send them back to Ashkelon to find the hidden city and then get them to meet up with the rest of the fleet at Erbil. I can also send a Skylark over to ferry the missiles if I want to. Um, it's a little bit complicated moving equipment around between fleets, uh, but we should be able to work it out fine. I used to be very careful that I don't accidentally throw this fleet away. This fleet has also finished its job. Um, they've actually picked up enough intel to scan again. Uh, where was that trade fleet? So it's uh, one of the ones we saw earlier, I think, Argon. They're over there. We'll send these guys up to Kua. We still haven't been detected yet, which is great. Um, so as far as the enemy is concerned, nothing is happening down here. No one has been able to raise the alarm on any of our attacks. Uh, and that they do not know that we are invading them yet. Okay, they're taking off. The Sevastopol has almost arrived in Erbil. I need to make some money from these two attacks so the Sevastopol can afford to refuel. I've spent a lot of money on equipment, but finding those missiles... Oh, actually, that's something I also wanted to do. Um, oh, no, that's the wrong place. I didn't want to mark there. Hang on a second. I want to mark that there are strat missiles... And, and there's also planes there. Uh, we'll just use the ruler tool to point an arrow to it, just so that I always know. Okay, we'll send the upgun lightning into a fight here. We're almost ready to send this lightning off as well. In fact, I'll just do it now. I we'll actually want to wait until it's, it's able to return, because that can go very badly for you if you send it out and it's not able to fly back. If you run into something you can't handle and need to retreat, so I'll send him out too. Uh, Sevastopol is 2.3 hours out from Erbo. We're about to run into a fight here. If we zoom in, we'll be able to see it's nighttime, so the visual distance is slightly reduced, so it's actually harder for them to see us coming. And we should detect a trade, uh, not a trade fleet. There's the garrison detected. They're starting to um, scramble to deal with us. We're going to hit them before they're able to. Cool. All right, so we've got our 130. Oh, I don't even need to worry about. Uh, I, was going, I was tempted to use. Oh, we've got. Look, we've picked up some laser guided um, ammunition for 130 millimeter guns. That's great for later. I don't need to use my prox fuse. We'll just use HE for this because it's just a slug runner, courageous. Um, and the 100 millimeter takes short work of these. 130 millimeter makes even shorter work. Hopefully, those shots hit. Yep, we took lots of hits on the courageous. Okay, the courageous is gone. That's the slugger shooting at us. I was a little bit lazy there. The... Oh, 
It's a little bit need to get my head in my eye in on the 130 mil. But the 130 mil from a 100 millimeter upgun on the uh, lightning is such an easy upgrade. It just it feels it feels very intentional that they have you know that that is a, such an easy upgrade to make. Cool, and that is a very very easy win at Zartana. So we've got to search for survivors. We need to disable a fab one. So one of these guys had a bomb, and if we don't disable that, it's going to explode. So we'll do that first. Then we'll get the survivors. Then we will get the fuel tanks, and if possible, we'll get the radio uh, room too. Our next fleet battle will start momentarily. Uh, they're just about to arrive. Let's see what they've picked up here. Yep, there is a garrison here too. Not a trade fleet, however. Um, the reason the game just paused is because this uh, rescue just completed. So we'll just quickly give a new rescue order. So we're going to secure the search, save the survivors next. Straight into another fight. We've got two sloggers. Um, don't need to use prox fuse, but let's just make. Uh, no, we don't have a lot of prox fuse at the moment. We'll just use HE for this. Two v one. HE is fine. Especially when they're starting off on the ground. It feels a lot weaker firing with a 100mm after just having a fight with a 130mm. Looks like I didn't get a lot of good shots off here. Didn't manage to do a lot of damage before they took off, but that's fine. That wasn't a great shot. I did get one off. I want to try and finish this guy first if I can. And we'll just start coming down to get some good decent momentum to dodge around this missile. Now what I want to do is get between these two ships so they are shooting at each other. Because if I get them shooting at each other... Okay, he just caught fire and blew up. They can do quite a lot of damage to themselves by shooting... Well, with, by through friendly fire is what I'm trying to say. We're very low to the ground here, but we just won the fight. Didn't take any hits, I think. Um, Lightning's doing great work leveraging their speed and agility to um, really get us ahead of the game. So looking around here, we've got a deity maw we can uh, loot. It's great, we've got fuel tanks. We don't have to worry about saving the crew. So we're gonna grab the fuel tanks, then we're gonna dis disassemble this gun. Uh, there was a trade fleet here 12 hours ago. The <laughs> Sevastopol still has not arrived at Erbil, and we've already taken a decent chunk of the bottom of the map. Um, and you can see like a different gameplay, hopefully evolving here, but we're not really using the Sevastopol for much more than a big transport ship. Um, and we're getting the rest of the fleet. Now that I have the Skylark, what I could actually do, if I wanted to, is detach the Longbow, the Fennec, sorry, the Longbow and the Yars, um, and have them operating as an independent um, utility group that will shadow one of my strike groups and stay out of combat but in range to deal use their equipment um, while the Sevastopol and the Fennec continue to head north. And that's what I'm probably actually going to do. Um, they're not as fast as my other fleets, but they are still a lot faster than the Sevastopol. Okay, that's the fuel safe. Um, so I wanted to grab this gun. And I think I just forgot that we have a rescue operation going on over here. Um, no, I want the fuel tanks. Uh, if we can also get the radio room, that would be great. So they are arriving here momentarily. They're just about to land, which is great stuff. Um, money will be fine because I've got some guns to sell. That's the Moloch um, rescued. I can search the radio room, but we'll get protection first because I don't want to lose any guys. Uh, rescue over here is about to complete. That's the fuel, and that's them ready to land. The corp, we don't need to do any repairs. There is a Tarkan here. Oh, I am so lucky. This Tarkan has an aircraft carrier. So I can use this. This is great. A group of people approach you from the ship. They all dress in military uniforms, so not to be armed. Um, so it's Omar, which is great. So um, a taller walks ahead of the rest. is faces with the element. Sword shows its hilt from behind. All sends a man of noble birth. Uh, because he's noble, I'm probably going to greet him as my lord. Um, he's not afraid of me, but he does like my words, apparently. Don't really need to worry about the minigame too much on this one, because I can give him the small pot, and he instantly becomes my best friend. So he's now my ally. I'm looking for allies to wage war. Will you join me? He will, because I gave him the magic pot. And I want to meet other Tarkans, and he says there aren't any around here, which is interesting. Usually he's in range of another Tarkan. You're almost guaranteed to find him. Now this is a wasp, not a longbow. So let's have a quick look at it because I don't think I've unlocked the wasp before or recently. The wasp looks like a longbow. I can't see a huge difference. Um, it's up-armored longbow, basically. Which it doesn't really need. It doesn't need this armor. Top speed 310. If I was to take this armor off... That gets the top speed up to 378. It doesn't need any armor, 
it, it, if it's taking hits, I've already lost the game. So I'm actually gonna make that change. I don't need it to have this armor. I'm gonna sell these bombs as well, make a little bit of money, um, and we will exit out of here. So I'm now going to my new strat, my new my new objective is to get this fleet from Zartana over to the fleet here, transfer the missiles over, transfer the planes over, um, and have a double carrier group with my missile support that is acting independently of the Sevastopol. And the Sevastopol fleet is just going to be the Sevastopol and the Fennec. Um, got rescue orders still going on here. These guys are refueling, that's fine. I will fly them back over. Um, hopefully I can get them to Goshen. That's what I'm gonna try and do. And then um, what I might do actually is I'll fly them to Suva and I'll split at Suva. Okay, these guys have finished doing their job, and this festival has landed. So, you need to land and repair. No sign of anyone landed here, sadly. Now, I can't spend money on supplies here. I need to spend the money that I have earned from salvaging. I need to spend it on um, fuel for the Sevastopol. That's going to be extremely important. I want to jump the Sevastopol as far as I can on this next refuel. 100 meters. Everyone get ready. Touchdown confirmed. Cool, nice landing. That's a landing. Good work, everyone. Um, any events? Nope, we'll get them repairing. Okay, we'll sell our stuff. So we've got a DAD Moloch to sell. Now, there are A100s here, which are, is a different um, radar homing tactical missile. There are also um, Zeniths here, which are a mountable rocket. There are, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Let's, can I undo that? No, I have to undo everything. So we'll do this again. We'll sell this. Uh, we'll say okay. We'll sell this. So there are Zeniths here, which I would like to buy, but I want to make sure I've got enough fuel first. AK-100s here, there's Palash here, which are great. I don't think there's any strategic weapons here. No. We've also got some tracking sensors, which are important. So I, I might come back here and buy some Zeniths for the ship once I've refueled the Sevastopol. But for now, we'll let them repair. Let's check out the Sevastopol. Um, it has landed. So again, I want to split these fleets off. Um, I accidentally put a marker here, which is funny. So let's just check refueling the Sevastopol. How far can I get on eight grand? Pretty far. So my main goal really, if I could, would be to like refuel this much and fly it out to the hidden city that's somewhere around here. But if I do that, they're gonna be stuck sitting at Erbil for too long and they're probably gonna get detected. So I'm probably gonna give them enough fuel to get to Ashkelon in one jump. And once they've done that, they um, can refuel there and go to the hidden city. So we'll do that. But I'm also gonna mess around a little bit here. So it's probably not gonna end up that tight because I want to split this fleet up before it's finished refueling. But we'll let them refuel for now. These guys are, are refueling as well. Uh, there's no repairs to be made. I'm gonna fly them back to Suva. Um, and what I'm gonna do, if it's if I'm correct, is I can split the Lightning and the Skylark off from the Wasp, and the Wasp should end up with the missiles and the rockets because the Skylark and the Wasp are leaving the main fleet. Unfortunately, I can't check their, their inventory while they're in the air, but that should be how it works. Almost finished repairing here. We're gonna send them onto Kushan. I wanna try and clear the inside of this area. Actually, no, I'm gonna send them to Gizram because it's a sensor up here. No, Nahor, they, yeah, I'm gonna send them to Kushan. So they've almost finished repairing. Therefore, oh, I haven't unpaused the game, that's silly of me. So the refueling's happening here, that's great. Some fuel here as well, so I'll get some free fuel when I land. They've almost finished repairing. We're probably not gonna, I'm not gonna let there be another fight in this episode, but I wanna just get my sort of strategic uh, planning done. So uh, they're off, that's great. Uh, I did mess that up, no. They're still flying over. Look how much slower they are going. Because the Wasp has a top speed of 378 kilometers per hour, the whole fleet is traveling at 378 kilometers per hour, which is a little bit frustrating. Um, I can't break the Wasp off on its own though, because it's not gonna make it. Actually, actually, when we're in range here, I'm going to break the other two ships off and send them up to Ashkelon. So, uh, the, if I take the Lightning and the Skylark, I could send them here, and the Wasp should have enough. Let's just, let's just play it safe. I'm just gonna fly them in. I've had too many things go slightly wrong with that kind of fuel switching that I don't want to make a mistake. Okay, let's check here. Fueling is going slowly, but if I was to break off the Skylark, the Longbow, and the Yars, and increase the amount of fuel they had, I could get them to Goshen now, and then I could just go back into town 
and reset up the refueling of the, oh, we're fine. Yeah, it's gonna be fine. Cool, we'll just finish, keep refueling the Sevastopol, but I've got my new tactical strike fleet heading off. So they're gonna meet up with this wasp and they're gonna act, operate together. And they're gonna be what I use to take to bow, hopefully in the next video. Um, meanwhile, I've forgot to send my lightning off. I'll just do that now. We'll maybe have one more quick fight before this episode ends. And uh, yeah, I think things are going really, really well for the start of this game. Um, we could maybe even pick up some more strategic missiles if we get enough money to do so from fighting at Kushan. So we detected a uh, garrison at Kushan. Looks like another weak garrison just from what I just glimpsed. A Kratos and a Slugger. You're probably getting fed up with me fighting these. But it will get harder as we get deeper into the map. This is just the, the outskirts of civilization as far as the um, Garrett are concerned. Almost killed this ship already. He's in a very bad state, and he's on fire, so we could get out, and he's out. Just need to watch out for that missile that's coming for me. So we'll just do some careful dodging. I'm going to try really hard. No, I was going to try to get the missile to hit the uh, Courageous. It is still homing in on me, but I've messed up my turn. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Take the Courageous out. We'll stop wasting fuel. Almost done. Just dodge that fire. Uh, that's a win. Cool. All right. So I'm probably going to leave it there for now. I've had um, a really good start to this campaign. And uh, I hope you're keen to join me to see where we go next. Um, a veteran medic or we'll take the free load for the guns. Why not? Um, we've got ammunition about to explode. We've got fuel tanks about to explode. We've also got a bomb about to explode. There's nothing really of value here. So let's just make sure we get the fuel because I'm really clean on that free fuel. Um, what else is happening? People are leaving. They've got 10 hours to get to there. They're refueling. So what's the top speed of this fleet? 159. So that's probably... Which ship is the slowest here? It's the longbow. So the Wasp is also an up-engined longbow. So what I'll probably do is... Um, probably not at Golbaga. So just talking about my next episode and what we're going to do. Not at Golbagaz, but when I can get this fleet up to Kark... Kamish, I need to up engine the um, the longbow. So let's just make a note of that on the map so when I come back to play, I know what I'm doing. So um, up engine longbow here. That's just to remind me that that is a thing I want to do. However, I could type, however. And press return. Yeah, so I've just got a, a, um, a marker here to remind myself to up engine the longbow. Um, and then this fleet here is going to split. Um, so I'm going to send the lightning and the, the skylark to find the hidden city that I think is located somewhere around here. Um, these guys are going to continue doing their job over this way and the Sevastopol is going to finish fueling and it's going to start flying up and hopefully I can just get it straight to the hidden city where I can sit and refuel without worrying about getting into danger. But thank you for joining me so far. I hope you're enjoying this and that it is informative and, and interesting and a little bit different from some of the other Let's Plays you've seen. I don't know. Um, let me know if, if you have anything you want to talk to about me about and uh, I'll catch you next time. Thanks.